What's going on guys, this is Rob. Uh, if you guys enjoy my content, make sure you hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that little bell so you never miss out on my sexy voice. Okay, so for most of you guys out there, you guys recall Gambit as the guy who just like throws cards and blows stuff up and it's cool. Like, like, okay, here's the cool thing about Gambit. Gambit's cool because of his personality, not really because of his powers. His powers are kind of cool, but I mean, honestly, which one of us wouldn't give to have the power to like charge kinetic energy and objects and then just throw them and, uh, and blow stuff up. Like it, it was just, I mean, I would, dude, I'd make a YouTube channel on that. I would be like, okay guys, today we're going to charge, we're going to charge a, a baseball and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> I would so make a YouTube channel on that. And like every dude, it would be like the biggest YouTube channel on the planet. You know, I would, I would basically be like the new version of FPS Russia, except like, you know, I wouldn't have the ATF coming after me. I'd have every intelligence agency on the planet coming after me, <laughs> which by the way, I'm in a hotel room. That's one of the reasons why I'm talking quieter than I normally do. I can't be super loud, but nonetheless, Gambit, as you know him in Marvel comics, that's not the traditional nature of his powers. That's not the true nature of his powers, at least not historically speaking anyway. When it came came to Gambit, originally his powers were actually a lot more complex and he was a lot more powerful uh, than he than he is, at least at this current moment anyway. And it depends on, on what era of comics that you're reading. Like if you go and you read Gambit Volume 3, issues 14 through 16, or you go read Uncanny X-Men number 350, you basically end up learning that in the beginning, Gambit's powers were wildly powerful. I mean, Gambit was insanely powerful. So the way this played out, when Gambit's powers first manifested, it was basically like total control over the kinetic energy of an object. And he didn't have to touch it in order to, to make it explode. It wasn't limited to people. It wasn't limited to like inanimate objects. He could just like see a thing and then charge the kinetic uh, kinetic energy into it. So it was more like a, a telepathic and telekinetic connection as opposed to just like charging, you know, the, the kinetic energy in, a, in an object. But because that was far more power, uh, for far too much power for him to be able to control, uh, he in turn traveled to visit a guy named Nathaniel Essex, also known as Mr. Sinister. And Mr. Sinister was a mutant geneticist who has a very, very, very long history. Um, and we're not really going to get into it in, in this video, but suffice to say, he's the guy you go to when you want to study genetics. And so Gambit went to Sinister and said, my mutant powers are beyond my control. You know, they're, they're running out of my control. You have to do something to fix it. And so Sinister said, okay, fine, I'll do this, but I'm going to ask you for a favor later on. And you're going to have to honor that favor. And so Gambit said, okay. And so Sinister removed a portion of Gambit's brain that would allow the powers to continue on. And instead his powers always remained in check. Now there was a point where, or at least one of the things we ended up learning, and I want to say it was in Gambit volume three, it was in, it was either issue number 24 with, with new Sun or it was issues 14 through 16 that led up to New Sun, but it was it was it was revealed that this portion of Gambit's brain that Sinister had removed, he had preserved in case Gambit wanted his, the full totality of his powers back, which he got. He actually got that during the New Sun story arc, uh, and we'll talk more about that here in a second. But the idea here was that Gambit went forward with his powers reduced, and they were they were more in control. Now that begs the question: What would happen if that didn't happen? Like, what would Gambit be like if he had full and complete and total control over all his powers, and he wasn't limited by like you know having to touch an object or something like that. That's New Sun. So New Sun was a version of Gambit from an alternate reality where that surgical process never took place. And instead his powers were just like, he was he was almost omnipotent in terms of the powers that he had. He wasn't like universe level reality warping. He wasn't like the molecule man Owen Reese, but he was powerful enough to like kill the Phoenix, you know, to kill Phoenix in his universe, Jean Grey, uh, despite all of her abilities and so on. I mean, he was pretty damn capable. What made him so dangerous was that he could turn himself into a pure form of energy and then transcend to different dimensions, like, like leave his own reality and go to other dimensions and different things like that. That's what made him so dangerous. But he's like pure energy in its most pure form. But he can like detonate objects of any size. He could look at a city, for example, and say, here's the whole of New York City. So we're going to charge all the kinetic energy in the whole of New York City, the sewer systems, the people who are, are walking around, the buildings themselves, the subway station, the whole nine yards, just detonate it all at once. And, and, and it would it would be insane. It would literally just all explode. He had total control over the kinetic energy of any object that he happened to see, people inanimate otherwise. That's what made him so dangerous is because he was so astronomically powerful, he could just make things explode. Now, really, when it, when it comes to that level of power, I mean, it wasn't just that, right? Like it wasn't just making things explode. And that's, that's what, that's what made him so cool because he controlled the kinetic energy of an object. He controlled the motion of an object. So he could like stop people dead in their tracks and they wouldn't be able to move or he could make them move if he wanted to. Like he was just controlling, you know, they're, they're really the nature of movement and the, the energy of a particular object. Um, it was, it was kind of murky waters if I'm being 
being honest, because a hair either way, and he would have just become God. I mean, like, like somebody who can just touch anything or can look at anything and make it explode, make Galactus blow up and just be like, Galactus is like, I hunger. And he shows up to earth and he's like, nope. Or you can make the earth explode or make another reality explode. In fact, I think that was part of New Sun's plan was to take everybody off earth and then put them into a different, on a new, on a different planet and then destroy the earth. Like it was, it was crazy in terms of the, the kind of power that he had. But when you're talking about someone like that in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, who the hell can fight him? Like imagine Ultron showed up and Ultron was just like, oh man, you know, I'm doing my thing. Like New Sun would have just blown him up. The Incredible Hulk comes running towards, you know, New Sun trying to stop him. He just freezes him in motion. And it's just like, I mean, hey, you can't move. I mean, I'm, I'm not physically holding you back. Like I'm just shutting down the movement of your body. That, that's all that is. And the, the Incredible Hulk would have to fight against himself. Now it is the Incredible Hulk. So ultimately his anger would reach such a high level that he would just move anyway, because that's what he does, you know, but but it's, it's, it's crazy. Like being able to control the movement of objects or making them explode or turning himself into a pure source of energy or different things like that. It's absolutely bonkers in, in terms of the kind of things that he can do. That's what makes it so insane is when it came to manipulating the, the movement of matter, this is why classic Gambit would be so powerful is because take, for example, like heat It's a classic rule of chemistry. If you want to see how two elements interact, put them, in, put them in a beaker and add heat. That, that's all it is that you put them in a beaker, add heat. It makes the, the atomic, the atoms just start moving faster and faster. And they'll, the, the molecules may break apart or they'll just start forming other molecules or whatever, you know, and the, the chemicals will start bonding, you know, just, just see what happens. But but when you're talking about controlling the movement of stuff, like cold is the absence of heat. Absolute zero means there is no atomic movement on any level whatsoever. And so if if he's able to control on, on a fundamental level, the molecular movement of matter, the atomic movement of matter and slow it down, he can literally create cold. And that's one of the things that, that, that New Sun did. He could create cold by just slowing things down to the point where they were, it was just astronomically cold or make things super hot by like speeding them up. I mean, that's, that's what the whole thing of, of creating an explosive process was, just moving atoms is such an astronomical rate that they would explode. And that's why characters like that are weird. You know, that's why some, someone like him couldn't really fit into the MCU and why he doesn't really have a place in comics is because you're basically talking about manipulating the atomic structure of matter, if only for no other reason than to just make it move faster. Now that's one of the big, big differences between like, okay, let's, let's talk about this for a second, because this is an important thing. In Marvel comics, you have what are called reality warpers, and then you have matter manipulators, all right? Reality warpers are people like Franklin Richards, people like Matthew Malloy, um, people, you know, people who can basically change reality to make it whatever it is that they want it to be. The idea here is you have like the law of conservation of mass, right? Like matter cannot be created or destroyed. That following the rules of physics, when you die, your atoms will be dispersed across the cosmos to become part of the background energy of the universe, or they'll become part of the earth and the dirt or whatever the case is. But like your, your atomic structure will go somewhere. When it comes to some, to something like a reality warper, like Franklin or like, like Matthew Malloy, that doesn't apply to them. They can just defy the laws of physics. They can just say like, I'm going to create a teacup out of thin air. I'm going to add matter to this universe. Like this universe is composed of however much matter I'm going to add to it because I just want this one particular thing. Matter manipulators are people who can manipulate the fundamental forces of the universe, but can't actually create or can't actually add to it. So like the molecule man was a matter manipulator. He was a matter manipulator of the highest order. At least he was until, uh, until they, they retconned his powers and said he was one half of a cosmic cube. And then he became a reality warper because he could just do whatever he wanted to do. But back in the old, days in the old Fantastic Four stories when he had his wand and he was just turning stuff. He was a matter manipulator. Now, again, like he became like a, a full fledged reality warper from Secret Wars going forward. But but like someone like New Sun, like Gambit with his classic powers, he's a matter manipulator. He can't really create anything in the universe, right? Like he, he can't really like take something and turn it, you know, just create something out of nothing. But if he can speed up and slow down the movement of atoms, there's no reason to believe he can't shift those atoms around to make them into something else to in turn, like break molecules down and then restructure them into something else. And what that would do is it would rematerialize things. He could turn a human being into a couch, a dog into a porpoise if he wanted to, you know, because he's just restructuring their, their genetic material, like their atomic structure into something else. He hasn't actually done that before. And so we can't, I mean, we would really be jumping to conclusions if we said that, but it stands to reason that he could, because you're talking about someone just manipulating the fundamental forces of the universe by manipulating the atomic structure of matter and so on and so forth. But that's why someone like Gambit, like classic Gambit and, you know, new Sun, he wouldn't be able to work in the Marvel Cinematic Universe because you're talking about a guy who's borderline controlling the atomic structure of matter on a universal scale. Yeah, that, that's the thing. He doesn't have to see it. All he has to do is know it's there and then be able to in turn control it. Like it doesn't have to be in his line of sight. You know, he just has to be aware of its existence. And that's, that's why it, it wouldn't work. It'd be cool, but it wouldn't work because no one would be able to stop him. Nobody would be able to challenge him. He would just be unchecked, unrivaled, but still, you know, it's, it's, it's a weird situation. But with that being said, guys, we're going to bring this video to an end. If you are new here to Comics Explained, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure sure you drop a like and I will catch you all later. Peace.